Joshua Cooper, and welcome to Cooper Union, what's happening with human rights around our world on Think Tech Live, broadcasting from our downtown studio in Honolulu, Hawaii, in Moana Nui Akea. Today, we're looking at freedom of opinion and expression for all, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Article 19, Artists for Rights in Action, the power of the pen around the planet. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights provides the power of ideas to initiate change in the world, and the UDHR outlines opportunities for a new direction rooted in inherent dignity and inalienable rights for dynamic, sustainable development and social democracy. Today, we're very fortunate to be focusing on Article 19, one of the most important rights in the world, focusing on the right to freedom of opinion and expression with two amazing cartoonists and artists. First, starting with you, Oisin, can you share with me what was the inspiration for you to begin to share your art and to become an artist and a cartoonist to express your important aspects of opinion and expression? Wow, that was quite a long question. Um, I have drawn my whole life. So, you know, for me to become a cartoonist was quite obvious. I just had to do it. Uh, my first years, uh, I did uh, commercial drawing. So just to make a uh, livelihood. But after a while, I started to think about the deeper consequence about what, what I was doing. And I thought, I don't want to end my life being a guy that is just selling more stuff or helping to sell more merchandise. I want to do something that I believe in, something of value, something that uh, people around the world can uh, benefit from. So I switched to teaching. And right away, I set a pretty big goal. I wanted to teach the entire world how to draw. And the reason for it is that I realized, because this was in about, in 90s and i realized that computers were taking over gradually where the pen and the pencil used to be uh, everybody was excited about softwares and what they could do and, and i said and i said but hey you know guys you got hands you got pencils don't don't forget the, the you know the basic mm, art skills or the com you know your the communication skills with your with the line so i wanted to teach that basic skill uh, and I chose television because at that time, internet was not that developed as it is now. And uh, and I went on TV. I, I, I had a company in Singapore at that time and I turned it into a TV uh, production company, started to uh, teach kids how to draw through television. So that was my big uh, mission. That's how I discovered kind of my my um, uh, my my passion for for teaching. And when I saw that it worked, you know, when I had kids in the street recognizing me and, and, and saying, you know, how much I have taught them, showing me cartoons that they, they learned from me, that really made it for me. I was hooked. I, I wanted to do this for the rest of my life. So that's how I got started and why I felt this was so important. Thank you so much. Pedro, can you share what inspired you to care about this issue and some of the first campaigns you were involved in? Yeah, I mean, um, talking about how I, I, I you know, became a, a cartoonist, uh, I grew up back in the 80s in Nicaragua. And, and, and you know, for me, it's, everything is very circumstantial. Um, I was growing in Nicaragua back in the 80s. Uh, I was a kid, and there was a, a, a civil war going on at that time in Nicaragua. And... Uh, we didn't have access to a lot of things. I mean, there was no internet, of course, at that time. Uh, we didn't have, uh, uh, you know, a lot of TV stations. There was only one TV station in Nicaragua at that time. And they will only work from 2 p.m. to midnight. And from that period of time, there will be on, only a couple of hours of cartoons for kids. So there wasn't a lot to entertain a kid at that point. And so I, I, I got into reading. And, and the way that I got into reading was by reading comics. The thing is that because of the economic embargo, uh, I wasn't exposed like other kids around the world to like superhero comics, right? Uh, yeah, the, the, they couldn't get into the country. I mean, Superman, Batman, Spider-Man, all that kind of stuff. The kind of comics that you would find in that, in, in, back in the 80s in Nicaragua was humor comics that came from Spain, from Cuba, from South America, right? The stuff like Mafalda, Baquino from Argentina and that kind of stuff. So that's the kind of stuff that I started reading. And again, since I, since I was very little, 
I kind of, you know, I was always wondering why things were the way they were in my country. Why, why my older brothers had to go to war? You know, why we lack so many things in my country? And those questions, you know, because that's another thing. When you see the South American comics, uh, humor comic strip and that kind of stuff, and, and, you, and you see a lot of Latin American comics in general, there is always kind of a social political thing going on. There was always uh, social and political content on those comics, which you will not find, you know, in the in the in the typical comic strips that you see in, in the U.S., for example. You know, we are more politicized in that way. So uh, it it was very easy for me to do the connection because I already like it to draw, you know, and and to start using. Uh, you know, Pierce has started copying these comics that I used to read and then to create my own cartoons and try to put my questions to those cartoons. So it was very early on in my life that I discovered that this is the kind of work that I wanted to do because it kind of mixed both things that I was really interested, which it was art and questioning the system, questioning the way we live and why we were living the way we were living. So, yeah. Oh, really important. I think that's the whole point of art being a catalyst for social change. And Article 19 focuses on everyone having the right to freedom of opinion and expression. And this right includes the freedom to hold opinions without interference and to seek, receive, and impart information and ideas through any medium, regardless of frontiers. And therefore, we can see how artists are those important instruments to make an impact to our international institutions and also to the minds of humanity. Could you share, Olsen, a bit how do you actualize Article 19 and what actions are you involved with these days to promote and protect human rights? Um, quite a few different things. It has grown over the years. But uh, when, I, when I first started teaching drawing, uh, I thought, you know, why, why do I do it? Why is it important? Uh, and I realized that... Uh, um, Drawing is a, an essential skill uh, for humanity. We are visual people. We think through pictures, we feel through pictures, and we express our biggest ideas through pictures. So if you don't have that ability or the skill, uh, you, you, you aren't using your full potential. Uh, so that's, that was the, 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 the basics of this. And later, I realized that, let's say, freedom of speech and creativity is very, very closely linked because it's got to do with freedom of thought and the absence of fear. So if you can, if you want to be creative, you need to have the freedom to think, to create, to speak. So those two are kind of like two sides of the same coin. Uh, and if you look at the the countries, the societies with the, the biggest freedom of speech, they are also the foremost societies in the world. So the creativity and this freedom to think and speak is, uh, you know, is the same thing. Well, that's how I feel about it. Thank you so much. And Pedro, if you can share a bit of some of the current ways that you're involved and in how you actualize the article. I know you were just recently recognized for your artwork. Can you share how you've been able to make an impact through your art to change institutions? Yeah, sure. Uh, let's start by saying that, uh, first of all, this is a personal thing. This is about my personal right, uh, you know, to, to freedom of expression. Um, since I started working professionally in this field, uh, I, I wanted to focus on the fact that it was going to be my view of, of what is surrounding me. I mean, I, I was very clear from the very beginning with my editors, for example, when I started working in newspapers, that they are, they were not going to tell me what to draw. You know, I wanted to say, I wanted to give uh, my opinion about the things that I was seeing. I wanted to ask about the things that I, I didn't understand. And I wanted to call out those people that were not behaving or were not doing what they were supposed to be doing to improve people's lives. I mean, I'm talking about political leadership. So uh, for me, first of all, it's, it's a matter of exercising my own personal, you know, 
uh, uh, right to expression. Then I realized, because of the context of my country, that I was becoming kind of a voice of a lot of people who couldn't say what I was able to say in my drawings and my cartoons. Why? Because we live in a, under a dictatorship in Nicaragua. Actually, that was the reason I had I was forced to leave the country uh, because independent journalism was kind of banned inside my country. We are the only country in all the American continent that doesn't have a single newspaper, for example. So uh, then you realize that you you somehow you be, you become the voice of these. Uh, thousands of Nicaraguans that they wish they could say what they feel or think about the regime and they can't do it because they could be, you know, kidnapped, put in prison, uh, kicked out of the country or even worse, they could be killed by by raising, you know, their voice. So I realized that I had a, a huge responsibility being maybe one of the few Nicaraguans uh, that because of my, if you want to say it that way, my 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 skills as a cartoonist, and 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 the place that uh, I was in as a voice on 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 independent journalist was kind of important, and I and and it's, it was it has been very very you know uh, interesting to watch how a lot of people reflect on my cartoons, and I think. Uh, of the comments that I used, I'm used to get almost every day is that you know that's exactly what I was thinking. I mean, reacting to one of my cartoons, and then the people say, "How come you can say, you know, how come you can find a way to say the things that we are all thinking because we are not, you know, and 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 and, and there is no secret. I mean, the the reason behind that is that just like anybody else. You know, and I get angry at the same things, and I question the same things, and I feel the same things because I'm just a Nic another Nicaraguan citizen. So that's how I see it. But uh, the thing that uh, you know, for me, Article uh, 19 is is that you know is the essence of what what I do, uh, but also is something that everybody should have because in the context like the Nicaraguan context where there is a dictatorship. These rights, they have become a privilege that only few can exercise and not without paying a high price. In my, in my case, it's exile, for example. Uh, uh, and, and my, you know, my, my, my goal is that at some point in our life, that, that, that right that is now considered a privilege of a few, can can really become a right for uh, uh, the entire Nicaraguan people. Yeah. Now that's so profound because the truth is all of our rights aren't fully realized unless we're all able to exercise them. And that's one of the yeah. powers of the Oslo Freedom Forum. It brings together people from around the planet, dissidents coming together, uniting in solidarity for those important rights. Because we know that if someone somewhere is not able to exercise their rights, that it impacts all of our rights. Maybe, Boyson, you can share with you, why do you come every year to Oslo Freedom Forum? What are some of the positive aspects? What panels were inspiring to you? I know there was a couple with artists uh, featuring uh, political art, but also song. There was a lot of different panels. The uh, Havel Award. What are some of the highlights for you and why you come to the Oslo Freedom Forum to be able to exchange and, and participate? Well, a lot of highlights. I think what I like the very, very best is to meet all the people. It's like it's like how I met you two guys. That's what makes it for me. And all the hundreds of other brilliant people I've met, uh, a lot of uh, who I keep in touch with and exchange things with. And um, I learn a lot, you know. Um, there's a lot of discussions. Uh, it's, it's, it's really mind-blowing. Um, and of course, to hear the stories, because you realize what shape the world is in, and you get to hear a lot of stuff that you don't hear on regular news, you know. And you get a you get a deeper insight uh, in, in in really people's lives and what it is like to live in, for instance, a, a dictatorship. Um, so so yeah, it's that learning experience. Um, then I'm I I draw, you know, I, I I've drawn about almost 500 cartoons from the from the forum over the years and and drawing these personalities and thinking about the stories 
the, the, of the people I'm drawing. It's it's very powerful. It's a, it's a great sort of spiritual exp experience for me. Um, um, and and I believe that. There is no choice. I mean, it, you 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 have to get involved with these things because you know the 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 the, the baddies in the world will gladly take over everything unless there are people that fight them, and you ha just have to join <laughs> the the good force. You know what I mean? So I feel that this is something I just must do. There there is no other way. There's no choice. Thank you so much. And that's a really important point. When you look at it, it sort of follows the Amnesty International logo of fighting bad guys since 1960s. And yeah. it that point up. Uh, Pedro, can you share, what was it also like to be honored with your artwork, to receive that Vaclav Havel Prize and be able to then share with everyone your message? Because in a way, the Oslo Freedom Forum also makes people sort of write stars and puts mm -hmm. them on a stage to be able to share their story. Can you share with us a bit more about your story and why it was so powerful and what was it like to be able to be honored with your artwork along with the other amazing activists and artists? Sure, it was a huge and pleasant surprise. I wasn't expecting this, of course. Uh, you know, I, I, I have been doing, I've just been doing my, my, my job the last, you know, 25 years, you know, uh, uh, doing what I, what I think it's the best that I can offer uh, the people, you know, which is uh, my art, which are my thoughts, you know, and try to build bridges, bridges of communication between Nicaraguans, but also people from all over the world about, uh, uh, you know, uh, our reality and, and how can we change this reality that is many, many times very difficult for many, many people around the world. I'm, I'm talking about people who are living under authoritarian regimes, which is the case in Nicaragua. And and, and having the chance to go to the also Forum, I mean, the HIP Prize is an amazing honor and it's wonderful. And, but, uh, you know, if you ask me about the highlights of that, uh, of that event, it, again, it's the same thing. It's getting to know more people and getting to know how a lot of people, you know, are trying to resist in, in, in their own way uh, under very, very, very hard circumstances and learn about their stories and feel that somehow, because this is something that sometimes happens, is that when you come from a very little country like mine and you are, you know, screaming your lungs out, with the hope that somebody's out there listening to what is is happening with your people and you're trying to reach people and try you're trying other people to care you kind of feel alone it's like you know is somebody paying attention out there you know and and, and then coming into an event like this and then getting to meet all these wonderful people these uh, you know uh, uh, sharing their stories and and then you realize you are not alone, you know. And and then there is a lot of people out there who knows how you feel because they are feeling the same. And and then you can recharge your batteries and get more ideas to keep doing what you are doing in a most effective way. Uh, I really enjoy cre creativity, and I can't even tell you how many great ideas I got by just going this one to Oslo. This is this was my first time. I've never been there before. And, and just with one time, you know, getting exposed, all the installations that they had, for example, the different programs that they have, you know, one that especially caught my attention, it was this fantastic idea that they had uh, to on how to show slavery in China. You know, the people who are put in prison to build all these merchandise that we later buy for five bucks from Amazon or Walmart or whatever, you know. And what is the real price behind that, uh, that uh, you know, market? And the way that they put it in that installation, you know, with the received design, with the faces of the, of the, of the prisoners and the cost of rights, that, that everything that it, bad that it has to happen for you to be able to buy a shirt for five bucks. I mean, that's, that's a really, really powerful message in a very creative one. And that is, Talk with me, it's like, you know, this is the way of doing things. This is how you raise awareness about these kind of things. And I'm just mentioning one of many other things that I saw over there. Uh, it was a totally 
wonderful experience for me, very educative. And I am very, very thankful for the prize and for, for having the chance to, to share with all these amazing people. It's true. It's definitely an idea hub where you can find inspiration with a conversation around the coffee or listening to the speaker up on the stage or seeing anything happen. It just really does. It motivates you. It then is a moment in time that we decide what we can do and how we can do it together. And that's what's so powerful as well about the UDHR. The UDHR calls for a coalition of conscience centered around mm -hmm. trust and transformation while honoring values, voice, and vision. And on the 75th anniversary, it's important to reflect on the role of human rights in our daily lives and world affairs. And as we look at that, and as you described, Pedro, it, it definitely reminds me of another one where they put all the information on the jump drives and then put them mm -hmm. in the mouths of the dictators. I mean, everywhere you go, those exhibits are pretty powerful. When they had the one on how many people are living under fully authoritarian regimes, partially democratic and those aspects, people look and see where they find themselves. And as you pointed out, the more you talk with others, the more you realize you're not alone, but also how much you have in common and how you can have more connections and coordinate together to be able to mobilize to make a difference. As yeah. we look at that, maybe we can look and maybe Oysen, you can share as you put down that photo real quick and we can see your face. <laughs> what NGOs do you think create a culture of human rights around this artistic right? And who are some other major heroes or sheroes of Article 19 that inspire you that are also cartoonists and artists? Oh, um, uh, yeah, uh, there's so many. There's so many. Um, I, uh, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know if I can mention a, a specific name right now, um, but but uh, one one thing that comes out of the, the the forum, for instance, is that you discover how many people that are concerned with the same things as you and how you can connect with them and collaborate and make something much much big, much much bigger than you could do yourself. Uh, so um, I keep on uh, uh, expanding my network and. Got all kinds of ideas on what what we could do uh, together in the future, but I'm not ready to come up with that right now because you know this is not fully formed yet. But it's uh, certainly uh, uh, growing. Thank you so much, Pedro. Are there any people that inspire you that you know from Nicaragua time or others in South and Latin America yeah. that really paved sure. the way? Yeah, there are so many, so many people that are doing great things, uh, you know, uh, talking about another experience that it was unbelievably good for me now that I was in the Oslo Forum. It was this another thing that they they built in uh, virtual reality. They revealed the Elicoide jail from Venezuela. Uh, that was, you know, a very impactful experience when you get to see what a political prisoner has to live with or has to endure. Uh, because of the way they are thinking, and now talking about artists, I, I just wanted to mention that that they're feeling really about artists from Nicaragua that really inspire me. And there are so many of them: people who are doing film, people who are doing music, writers. I mean, everywhere. If you are talking about uh, artists, very important right now uh, uh, in in the resistance in Nicaragua, and you could find Nicaraguans doing very interesting stuff in almost any art medium and that's uh, wonderful for me yeah i remember the virtual aspect i saw someone actually jump and i saw other I know. It's, shift it was, as well when when they put yeah. those headsets on and they were walking in the shoes of the people in prison for doing nothing but exercising their article 19 and yeah. if we think about it maybe we can talk a bit about a vision for the future of this right and other aspects of where we see i know you, Oisen, are looking at climate justice. Can you share a bit about the future of Article 19 and how art can have an impact on climate justice? Uh, yeah, well, I'm an environmentalist. And uh, for me, uh, dealing with democracy and human rights uh, is, is almost the same thing. Because the people that cannot respect uh, human lives or uh, human rights also don't respect animals' lives or rights and plants and the environment. 
they are ignorant to everything. So, you know, uh, it, 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 everything hangs together. So I realized that if you want a green, happy, prosperous, beautiful, healthy planet, you got to battle these bad guys because, you know, they'll ruin everything. They'll chop down everything. And so, you know, it's, it, 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 it's part of the same thing. Yeah. It's true. Everything is interconnected. And that's where I yeah. think your artwork, as well as Pedro's, really does connect aspects because you can see one drawing and understand something that would take an entire book to explain. Pedro, can you share a bit about what you see the future of the freedom of expression and, and how you see things changing and being able to move in a positive direction? Sure. I mean, again, uh, I, I just say a few minutes ago that my goal is uh, for freedom of expression for Article 19, if you want to see it that way, you know, as a right for everybody. That's my goal for everybody, not just in my country, but uh, in the entire planet. And, uh, and, and and it's, you know, I don't know if it's achievable in my lifetime, but I, I am betting on it because I think, honestly, that freedom of expression, uh, it's, uh, it's the way to go. Because if you have that, it's what is going to warrant it, all the other rights that you really need. I mean, freedom of voting, freedom of uh, speech, freedom of press, freedom of, you know. So it's very important for everybody. First, than like anything, be aware that you have rights just by the, 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 the fact that you are a human being. You, are, you have rights. And, and then exercise those rights and defend those rights if you live in societies when they are already respected. Because that's another thing. There is not a place in, in, in this planet where human rights could not be in danger at some point. So you have, we have to be permanently alert about them. I think that was one of the best points when someone asked a question about what can we do to help? And they said, take care of your own democracy. Make sure that life is good where you live and make sure that the foreign policy matches your values. And that's what's so crucial about the Oslo Freedom Forum, but also Article 19 that points out that the power of the pen around the planet serves as a tool for transformative change. And UDHR Article 19 creates that chance for people to exchange expressions for greater understanding of universal rights as building tools for a better transformative world. Thank you as artists for sharing your creative expressions to educate humanity and inspire initiatives for social change. Mahalo. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please click the like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Check out our website, thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.